<clears throat> I want to talk to you for the next few moments, it won't be long, about what I believe to be one of the most sought after treasures in all the world. For centuries, even to this present day, people search high and low for it. From kings to paupers, people will pay any price to possess it. They'll go to the far ends of the earth to try to acquire it. Many will go from doctor to doctor or counselor to counselor in their search to find it. They hope it might be found in the right bottle. They hope it will come with the right career or profession. They hope it can be found in the right car or the right house or even the right spouse. It's not found in in your spouse either. Some even go from spouse to spouse in their attempt to acquire this. Many Christians move from church to church and small group to small group in their attempts to find it. If I make a certain salary, many say, then this will come with it. If I go to the right school, uh, surely it will be found there. If I join the right club, I'll I'll find it there, or maybe I'll find it in doing more good deeds, in in helping more of the less fortunate, or in giving more of my own resources away to those in need. Man's desperate search for this treasure is justified because in this precious possession is everything you need to live a life of true Success. As a matter of fact, you cannot live a life of true success without this. You cannot live a victorious life as a Christian without this. However, money can't buy it. Reputation and influence cannot acquire it. The right church cannot provide it to you. Doing good deeds will never reveal it. Marrying the right person will not bring it. Attending the right school will not get it. Acquiring the right level of higher education, higher degree will not bring it. So, (laughs) what is it? Maybe some of you are guessing inside. It is obviously found in one person, in Jesus Christ. It is found in Him and Him alone. He alone possesses this precious gift, and He lived and He died to provide it to us free, to each and every one. He reveals this gift to us in John chapter 14, as He's talking with His disciples and preparing them For his soon departure from the earth. This is one of the last conversations that he has with the disciples. And it goes like this, John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you... As the world gives. You know what that tells me? There is a peace that the world gives. We're going to get to that in just a moment. It's not as the world gives. So do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. I talked about that a couple of weeks ago. No fear. There is no fear. When the peace of God The peace of Jesus, the free gift of this peace that Jesus knew was so very precious, was was such an urgent, important, and critical treasure that we needed in our lives. 
I love what the Amplified Version adds. Listen to what it adds at the end of that verse. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. And do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. There are way too many unsettled and fearfully and agitated people in the family of God today, and it need not be so. If you will today receive this peace that Jesus came to give to every one of us. So today's message simply titled, simple, no Jesus, no peace. If you know Him, you know peace. When you receive the peace that comes through Jesus Christ, you still go high and low. You'll still go here and there and everywhere. And you'll still fight hard. But you will not go high and low and search here and there and go uh, fight hard. You'll, you'll do it not to get this peace, but you'll do it to keep this peace. Because if the devil is after anything, he's after your peace. If he can get you to do anything, he will, he will get you to make a choice, make a decision that you are not at peace with, then you're in trouble. I oh, understand something today. Maybe I don't have the right degree. Maybe I don't have the right house. Maybe I don't have the right reputation. Maybe I don't have the right car. Maybe I don't have the right education. Maybe I don't have the right salary. Maybe I don't have the right, or I, don't, I didn't go to the right school, or I'm not going to the right school now. Maybe you didn't grow up in the right neighborhood. Maybe Jesus didn't give you the biggest house on the block. Maybe He didn't give you the newest car. Maybe, maybe He didn't give you the, 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 uh, more money. Maybe He didn't give me the biggest church in town. Maybe he didn't give me more reputation, but there's one thing I know today that he gave me. He said, my peace, son, I give to you. My peace, not the kind that the world gives so that my heart today is not troubled and I am not afraid. Let me tell you something. If your peace is attached to the car, when the car is gone, your peace is gone. See, that's the kind of peace the world gives. The kind of peace the world gives is the peace is attached to some temporal thing, some temporary object or some temporary possession. If your peace is attached to the job, when the job is gone, your peace is gone. If your peace is attached to your spouse, when your spouse is gone, your peace will be gone. If your peace is attached to your friends, when the friends leave you, your peace will leave you. Does anybody understand what I'm saying today? If your peace is attached to that salary, when the salary is gone, your peace is gone. If your peace is attached to the pill bottle... When the pill bottle's empty, your peace is empty. If the peace is attached to your reputation among men, when your reputation among men is gone, then your peace is gone. If your peace is attached to that boy or that girl, when they walk out on you, your peace walks out on you. If your peace is attached to your church, when your church fails you, your peace will fail you. Does anybody in here today have a peace that the world didn't give it to me and the world cannot take it away? My peace, Jesus said, I give to you. Therefore, once we're in that peace, our hearts are not troubled. Our hearts are not afraid. We are never, no, never in fear. I'm talking about a peace that keeps you when you're in conflict. It'll keep you from going from conflict into confusion. 
It'll keep you from going from a little pressure into panic. It'll keep you from going from a confrontation into chaos. Because in this world, we're going to have tribulation and trouble. But because of His peace, we can be of good cheer because He has overcome the world. Hallelujah. My friend, there is nothing in this life worth the price of your peace. Nothing, nor anyone. Worth the price of your peace. Do not sell your peace for a bowl of porridge when your stomach is growling. There's nothing in this life worth the price of your peace. If my peace is required for me to have that, In other words, if the price for me to have a certain thing is my peace, I will not have that thing. It's not worth it. If I have to give up my peace in order to move there, I'm not moving there. If I have to sacrifice my peace in order to take that job, then I'm not going to take that job. If my peace is the price that I have to pay for it, then I'm not going to have it because I will never hand over my peace to anyone for any reason, any time. Because I don't have a peace that the world gave me. I have a peace that Jesus gives. And I will not let anything of this world take it away. When trouble comes, I know I'm going to make it through because His peace is with me. When the storm comes, I'm going to make it through because His peace is with me. Hallelujah. The Apostle Paul writes in Philippians 4, 6 and 7, Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Then look what happens when you do that. And the peace of God, which by the way was already here. It's got to already be here. See, you can't call peace down unless it comes from here. When peace is already here, a prayer, a prayer in the moment will release peace into the situation. By prayer, in everything, I'm not anxious. And the peace of God, verse 7 says, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That means that when His peace is on the inside of me, It is always just a prayer away. Always. That means that in every situation, by prayer, His peace will rise up and protect me. By prayer, His peace will rise up and guard my heart and mind. By prayer, His peace will rise up and strengthen me. By prayer, His peace will rise up and give me rest on every side. In other words, even though I have every right to be afraid, I will not be afraid because the peace of God has flooded my heart and mind in and by Christ Jesus. When you have every right to be in fear, you won't be in fear. When you have every right to be anxious, you won't be anxious because the peace of God which transcends all understanding all reasoning, all logic, all thought processes will guard your heart and will guard your mind in Christ Jesus. Because let me tell you something, the storm in here is much worse than any storm out here. I said the storm on the inside, if the peace of God is not there, is so much worse than the storm on the outside. We arrived in Haiti Tuesday morning on the early flight. Pastor Renee and Austin L. were there to greet us. Christopher was not because he was at the embassy in a meeting. He's trying to get a great niece and a great nephew three years old and 18 months old, uh, out of the country to give them a better life here. He had a meeting at the embassy, thought it would be on Monday, he'd be ready for us Tuesday. Well, in that meeting, it just led to another meeting. We were leaving Tuesday, go to the island, spend two nights, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, come back Thursday. 
So when we, when we finally saw Christopher about 1 o'clock that afternoon after he got out of that meeting, he was all down. Oh, pastor, the plan, I hate to tell you this. The plan has changed. I said, it's not a problem. It's fine. He said, We're, we've got to come back. I've got to get papers for my, my niece and nephew, my great niece and great nephew, and help, you know, and, and I have a, have a meeting at the embassy on Thursday morning. <clears throat> so that meant we got to Got to get across the ocean to the island, survey the project, greet the pastor, get some updates, video some things, spend one night, come right back on Wednesday. And we're bringing the three-year-old and the 18-month-old on the boat with us coming back. Beautiful ride there. Uneventful. This is nice. Lovely. Beautiful Caribbean clear water, just beautiful all the way there. We went straight to the dock. You saw the the the, the new pier, the new or, or the dock that we went. That's that's the, the that's the town. The church is. You just walk up, and if 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 the camera had just gone up a little like that, you'd have saw the church. It's up on a hill. It's beautiful. It's overlooking the Caribbean. <clears throat> so then we you know rested. R and R had you know just you know eight eight grubs and and uh, sticks and uh, that's all y'all need to know. And then we and so then we got up on Wednesday and we had to we had to get get back. So we all get in the boat and so we start out you know everything's good so far from about halfway. It's by the way it's thirty miles. We go across the open water, open ocean, to get back to the mainland. Uh oh, then the, the wind started blowing, a dark cloud came over us. I mean, here we go, we're like hanging on, here we go again. And it's spraying and splashing, oh, the babies, it's just spraying all over the babies. And we're trying, there was no way to keep them dry. Everybody is soaked, there's no dry anything to wipe them with or just hold them. They didn't make a sound. I mean, God's peace was over those babies. They didn't even cry. They were sleeping part of the way. But we're, it's rough, it's rough. The dark cloud, I'm like, uh-oh. It's, and, the, and just you had to sit like this, it's just spray. You'd have thought it was a hard rainstorm. It's just salt water spray. And there were several times that the wave lapped over the side of the boat. It lapped over the side. I'm looking at Pastor Jamil, and just hanging on. And, and I glanced back, and when I, caught, when I caught a glimpse of that, it determined whether I had peace in my heart or not because Christopher was in the back with some kind of device bailing he's bailing he's been I'm like oh Jesus get us to the seashore (laughs) but you know what I looked over at Pastor Jamil and I said you know what I am not afraid and he said back to me neither am I the peace of God Because see, when you've got peace in here, let me tell you something, church. There ain't no storm out here going to throw you off course. There ain't no storm out here going to rob your joy. There ain't no storm out here going to steal anything from you when you got the peace of God on the inside of you. We came up on the seashore. I didn't know where we were. It wasn't the prop, it wasn't the way we come. And we all getting out, ring, just trying to get our shirts off, just re, you know, trying to whatever, get a drink of water, digging little water bottles and whatever we could do to get that salty, you know, whatever. And we walk up at some kind of marina kind of thing, Haitian style. There's some boats there, and we walk up over there, and then Christopher's talking to this man, and I walk up, and the man speaks English, and he says, Oh, Pastor, this is my friend. We he didn't know. He, we didn't know where we were. He goes, this is my friend. The first time I went to Lago Nob, this was the man that helped me go there. And so that's the property that we just washed up on just to get to the nearest point of shore. Because Now, here's the thing. The next day on Thursday, we were supposed to stay two nights. The next day, the seas were so much worse. Now, we're in a little... It ain't bigger now. My I grew up in you know in the South, and my dad used to have a little boat. He called it a John boat. I don't know if you ever heard, have you ever heard of that, Derek? Okay. Well, this boat is just a little longer than a John boat. It doesn't go very fast, but we could have easily just been rolled over if the plan, the steps of the righteous, are ordered of the Lord. 
He got us all back safe and sound. And, and there was peace in the storm. See, that's the thing. It's not, li- 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 let's change our expectation. Rarely will God just say peace to the storm. He's more concerned, you know, when Jesus was in the boat with that group, you know, and they were crossing over him and it got rough and water was lapping over the sides, the story tells us in the, in, in the Gospels. And Jesus said, Jesus said, peace be still. Then he began to speak to them and he kind of rebuked them because he said, what is the problem? Why don't you have peace here? Don't you understand a storm in here is a whole lot worse than a storm out there. You can make it through and ride through and get through every storm of life when there is peace on the inside and there's no storm here but when there's a storm here you're not going to make it in the storms out here you're going to get into fear you're going to get anxious you're going to get afraid you're going to get into doubt but I want to tell you something make sure you know the peace that passes all understanding that Jesus said I came to give you peace peace I came to give you peace I came to give you peace not like the world gives do I give you this peace so therefore with this peace when you go through the storm you don't have to be troubled when you go through the tribulation you don't have to be troubled be of good cheer I have overcome it all hallelujah It's a much, much bigger miracle when Jesus says, peace be still to this storm than to any storm out here. Much bigger miracle when you receive the peace that calms this storm. When there's peace in here, no storm out here I'm going to be afraid of. There's no storm out here that can defeat me. There's no storm out here that can destroy me. There's no storm out here. When there's a storm in here, then the storms out here are going to, I'm going under. They're going to drown me. They're going to defeat me. But when there's no storm in here, when there's peace in here, there is no storm out here big enough to hurt me because I do have a peace not like the world gives. I have the peace that Jesus and Jesus alone can give. The peace that guards my heart and it guards my mind in, through, and by Christ Jesus. So stop falling to pieces and fall into peace. I'm not breaking into pieces anymore. Instead, I'm breaking out into peace. Into peace. The Apostle Paul writes in Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. You know why there'll never be peace in the world? Because there'll never be peace in every human heart. And peace starts right here. You can't have peace out here when there's no peace in here. And with a storm in here, everything you go through in life is going to be a storm. Oh, you might make it through, but you're going to fight and and it has setbacks and two steps forward and one step back. If there's a storm in here, there's always going to be a storm out there. But when there is peace in here, there is no storm out here that's going to steal, going to rob, going to take anything from you. The reason so many people don't have peace out here is because they don't have peace in here. You cannot bring people to outward peace that have no inward peace. Anybody hear what I'm saying this morning? The peace of God. Don't do anything. Don't go with anybody. Don't take any job. Don't move anywhere. Don't sell anything. Don't start anything without the peace of God. And see, I, I, and notice I didn't say don't, don't, don't start it till you get every detail, till God shows you every. He won't. He won't. He said, I give you peace. In the world, you're going to have trouble. I give you peace in order for you to get through it. I give you peace. I'm not going to give you every detail, everything. You've got to trust me that my peace is in you. You've got to take one step at a time through peace. The peace that Jesus gives to every single one of us. Money can't buy it. There's no other way to acquire it. There is no substitute for it. I mean, 
but I do have to be at peace, and I'm going to be at peace. I don't have to get my way all the time, but i got to keep my peace. I don't have to be recognized, but I have to be at peace. You don't have to take my suggestions, but know this, you're not going to take my peace. It's not worth it. You may take me for granted, but you won't take my peace. You may take advantage of me, but you won't take my peace. You may accuse me, someone may accuse you, but don't let them take your peace. I can disagree with you, but I can remain at peace. You can disagree with me, but we can remain at peace. Because as members of one body, Paul said, we are called to peace. We are called to peace. As members of one body, we are called to peace. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. We're called always to make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual satisfaction, mutual edification, mutual submission, mutual agreement. Because see, we're of another kingdom. Here's the verse I didn't read. Let me go back. Because I want to read this verse. Anyway, it says, The kingdom of God is not meat, but is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. It's Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or drinking, but of righteousness, of peace, and of joy in the Holy Ghost. So then he goes on to say, let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace. To maintain our peace. To acquire it. And again, it's only found in Jesus. You know Jesus, you know peace. No, N-O, Jesus, N-O, no, peace. It's not found anywhere else. You can stop looking today. Don't waste any more money. Don't go to any more doctors. Don't waste any more time. Don't change schools again. Don't change uh, degree, your major again. Don't change churches again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how what Christians, yeah. If I get the right church, I'll have peace. Peace is only found in Jesus Christ and Him alone. Would you stand this morning? I want to ask you a question. You've, you, you've allowed the enemy to get to your peace. You've allowed fear to get to your peace. You've allowed confusion to get to your peace. You have given up peace in order to have this car or that job or that house or this friend or be a part of that group or date this person or marry that. You've given up peace. There's only one way for you to get your peace back is to come to Jesus Christ. And He will give you peace in this moment. Peace in this moment. It doesn't matter how rich you are, how famous you are, how popular you are. How many famous celebrities and famous rich people hang themselves and shoot themselves every single day because they got it all, but they never found peace. They never found peace. Nothing, nothing can be substituted for the peace of God that transcends all understanding. As you stand there, this is a solemn moment. We have baptisms. We're going to move to that in just a moment. Stand there and receive the peace. Receive the peace in this moment that Jesus has come to provide to you.